everyone, welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. I'm your co-host, Matt Johnson, here today with Justine Espiritu. First time since September. September 29th. Yeah, since we've both been here, so we're happy to be back again. Uh, as always, we're here every Thursday talking to Hawaii's movers and shakers in our local ag community. Uh, if you want to join the conversation, please start tweeting in at, at thinktechhi. And if you want to see the show again and again, uh, we'll be up on the YouTube channel, uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, Justine, you want to go ahead and introduce our guest today? Thanks, Matt. So today we have Joey Char, who is a land asset manager for Kamehameha Schools, overseeing uh, an ag park um, on the windward side, uh, Punalu'u. So he's here to talk about some of the things that's going on over there. Um, it's, it was started in 2012, and there's a couple different growers and operations, and there's been some new developments and a lot going on. So we get to have Joey here to kind of explain that, give your background with kind of managing a project like this, and let us know what's going on. Hmm. So thanks for joining us. Hi, Justine. Hi, Matt. Thanks, Joey. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. So one word. We don't like to use the word development in okay. Punalu'u. Okay. <laughs> That's something that doesn't sit well with the community. Mm. Um, okay, just so I don't know what word we would use instead, <laughs> but <laughs> but we don't want to send uh, the wrong message. Community. Right? Yeah. Building a community. Yes. yes. Great. Okay. So what can I tell you about Punalu'u Valley? So as an ag park, it, it started in 2012, so that's, that's not too long ago. So if you kind of want to talk, uh, start with uh, the impetus and the, the purpose of this specific piece. Okay, so a little bit of history. Um, Punalu'u Valley is a part of the statewide legacy lands that Princess Bernice Pauahi Bishop um, endowed a trust with, known as Kamehameha Schools, whose mission is to educate Native Hawaiian people. So the valley is a true ahapua'a. It's 3,600 acres. It runs from the ocean all the way up to the top of the Ko'olau. And it's been an ag pre -con since pre-contact days. So it was started as ag, you know, traditionally lo'i. You know, I mean, it was a breadbasket for that side of the, the island back in the day. And then uh, it was rice, mainly farmed as rice mm -hmm. when Chinese immigrants came to mm -hmm. Hawaii. Then after that, it was put into sugarcane production when um, James Castle leased the valley as a part of his sugar operation. Mm -hmm. And then in 2000, the land came back to Kamehameha Schools, um, basically an in in-house management. You know, so KS took the land back and became an active steward of it. And that really, 2000 is really when the ag park concept came into being. And since then, um, uh, Kamehameha Schools has invested quite a bit of money in terms of putting in an irrigation system. And we've got about 25 farmers there farming about 175 acres currently. Uh, we have about 350 acres total, so there's a lot of room for growth in terms of bringing more ag into the Ahapua'a. It's always going to be ag because um, in March 2015, we petitioned the state and were granted um, the important ag lands oh, designation. Wow. So um, Kamehameha Schools has made the commitment to keeping the land in ag in perpetuity. So it's almost kind of like an easement on the property saying that it has to be in agricultural use where it can't be rezoned or redeveloped for anything else? Yes, meaning it, it, if we ever wanted to do something other than ag with it, it'd be very difficult, mm -hmm. you know, because we made it difficult for ourselves yep. by pursuing that designation. Mm. No, that's great. And that's, I mean, a large part of Kamehameha School's mission in, in bringing more local agriculture throughout the entire state. Um, so like you said, kind of developing these, these ag parks. Are there uh, other ag parks throughout the state on Kamehameha School's land? Yeah, I don't know if we, we don't really use the word ag park, but mm. there's ag land. So the endowment has about 364,000 acres total. It's mm. the largest private landowner in the state of Hawaii. Mm. Um, and the bulk of it is either ag or conservation land. You know, mm. So most people recognize the commercial part of it, mm. Iliili, Waikiki, you know, yeah. Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center. Um, but really the vast majority of the land holdings are in agriculture and conservation. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's ag operations throughout the state, you know, on um, Kauai, Maui, Hawaii Island, and Oahu, mm -hmm. primarily, yeah. um, and Molokai. 
So yeah, there's ag operations all over. But then with this one specifically, it's um, smaller parcels for uh, divvying up in smaller parcels for small farmers, specifically with diversified agriculture. Is that kind of unique? Um, yeah. So, well, I don't know if it would be unique. It would really be the idea that um, the, it's all one giant TMK that we've <laughs> taken and divided into um, arbitrarily divided into parcels of five to ten acres. And again, TMK means? Tax just, map key. So the, the Just like a land designation. Land designation. Okay. So from the, the city's perspective, that's how they, they charge taxes, mm -hmm. you know, r real property tax. Um, so we have 17 or so farmers actively farming right now, and they grow a wide variety of crops. You know, anything that can anything that they can sell, they'll grow. Mm -hmm. So you know, diversified egg, vegetables, fruits, um, beetle leaf, which is a mm -hmm. product that they uh, a lot of. So a lot of our farmers are Southeast Im Southeast Asian immigrants, mm -hmm. and um, they grow this product called beetle leaf. Um, but really, from our perspective, trying to move the needle on local food production is really one of the, the primary goals of getting the land into active production. Yeah. Is also local production as well as local consumption of that? Uh, I thought that might have been a goal of that as well. Like, um, yeah, I think that that would be a great goal, hopefully, that everybody would strive for. I mean, we can't control what people buy, but hopefully if more local produce is put into the grocery stores, then people will buy it, and the more people that buy it, will increase demand, so more farmers will get into growing it, and hopefully it'll just exponentially increase in that way. So, I mean, being a farmer, one of the hardest things to do is actually to get onto land, so this is a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. What's that process look like if somebody who's watching the show right now is interested in farming up on Lou? Mm -hmm. what, what's that process look like? Is it open to anyone who says they want to come on and farm? Are there requirements? What, what's that process look like? So um, Justine knows firsthand. Put You're going to go on a tour with Joey. <laughs> okay. All right. It's not the easiest place to farm, so I actually turn away more people than we bring in because you want to set farmers up for success. So and when you say it's not the easiest place, what do you mean? So geographically, it's, it's located in the middle of the windward side, mm -hmm. so it's not, you know, there's basically one road, Kamehameha Highway. Mm -hmm. So it's not the easiest place to get your crops to market. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, it's also topographically. It's, you know, the land that I've shown Justine is not the, you know, she basically looked at it and said, you want me to farm <laughs> this? <laughs> it looks what? like you needed to flatten things. And, but because at that time, too, there was yeah. all the flat area up in the front was they were getting not evicted, but the stream... It's being kept fallow in anticipation of a stream restoration project that we're still in the process of getting permitted. But the land, you know, but the land is good. The farmers that make it there love it there. Mm. Great land, great water, mm -hmm. but you got to know what you're doing. So I, you know, I usually ask four questions. I, I don't know if I asked I'm these. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you I didn't asked even these. get to the questions. Yeah. You're like, ah, I was enough. like, uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> but usually, based on the answers of these four questions, I kind of know whether or not they're right. And the first one is, what do you want to grow? Uh -huh. Second one is, what is your experience growing it? Mm -hmm. Third one is, where are you going to sell it? Mm -hmm. And if they get past the first three, then the fourth <laughs> one I usually ask is, why do you want to farm in Punalu'u? Mm -hmm. Because you could farm in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. And Punalu'u is, I don't want to scare anybody away, but it's not, you know, again, it's not the easiest place to farm. But if you can make it there, you could make it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is, well, I'm excited to know that there's a couple Go Farm graduates that are there and, yes. and some other folks. I know, and they're which, doing very well. Which yeah. also makes me curious. Have you said um, Southeast Asian immigrants, and I know of the, the Go Farm, but is the diversity of the farmers, is it a lot of people that have been going for a long time, or is it a lot of new farmers? Is, is it a mix uh, or uh, more so? It's, it's a one. mix. What, what's really encouraging to me is that the farmers who are there are younger, youngish. Younger than me. 
and that's really encouraging, you know, because okay. like Robert and Latasha, you know, yeah. who were graduates in your yeah. class of Go Farm, mm -hmm. you know, they've got a really nice one acre organic parcel that they're really doing well. Um, and, and what kind of stuff are they growing? Yeah, oh, God, I mean, you know, corn, beets, kale, oh. corn, oh, tomatoes. I said corn, tomatoes. They're, they're called yeah, little, little tomato, tomato farm. farm. Okay. Um, they really, they really know what they're doing, and they're making a really good go of it. And so, getting more farmers like them through programs like Go Farm and, yeah. and just networking and. I mean, that's what's been really cool as we bring people on of really seeing this pipeline that's kind of developing yeah. in in Hawaii to to bring that increase in producers. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, and so I think having more farmers like Robert and Latasha and. Um, Dave Berlou and a lot of other farmers that are really doing well. Um, and then you've got more experienced guys like Ted Nakamura, who's got some land in Punalu'u. And then um, the most recent one, which they haven't gotten on the land yet, but the Mahi'ai matchup winner for this year, mm -hmm. Maha'ulu, is going to take um, one of the Kahana side parcels that they're going to turn into an ulu orchard. And so there's a lot of promising upside. So a year from now, let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's great where you have different programs within Kamehameha Schools because I think you're recognizing that you know, it takes more than just having access to land. And then you have the Mahi'ai matchup mm -hmm. um, where we had Kalani um, on the show before talking yep. about the program where it's uh, a competition, a business plan competition where uh, applicants are applying for access to land. Yes. So there's... Uh, uh, some type of lease agreement for five years, something like that? Yeah, that they don't pay rent so that they are able to get their operation off the ground. Because you can imagine Ulu Orchard, it's probably three years minimum yeah. before you even see any fruit. Yeah, yeah. Probably more than that. And so the idea of the program is to help them just get off the ground and get established. And um, part of the competition is to reward them with seed money that they can use to get yeah, the operation yeah. started. It seems like a real holistic uh, approach where it's saying, okay, we have this ag land, and then there's also resources to help you financially and making sure that, you know, they have a good plan going into it mm -hmm. to give them as much opportunity for success. That's fantastic. Yeah. And I would really, that's a great point, because I would encourage anybody that wants to call me as a result of the show interested in Punalu'u, having a business plan really helps a lot. I mean, it really helps put on paper what they might be envisioning for themselves as a farmer. And if you can make it work on paper, then at least you've got a good shot at making it work in real life. Yeah, and I think it's great. I think KS as the land owner is, is a lot more collaborative in that effort than people sometimes think. Yeah. So we're actually going to take a quick 60 second break and then we'll kind of get into some new developments that's going on. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for a likable science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists to see how we can come together to make a renewable future. Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Food and Farmer series. I'm your co-host Justine Espiritu. This is my co-host Matthew Johnson. So happy to be reunited. Happy to be back. Today's guest is Joey Char, the land asset manager for Kamehameha Schools and we're talking specifically about Punalu. So we uh, talk about some of the different farmers, some of the different products, and I'm curious to hear some new efforts you're, you're kind of cultivating, one, to be more collaborative with who is farming there, as well as maybe some new initiatives of, 
of helping them bring the product into the community? So maybe related to ag, we have, um, so Punalu as, as a natural and cultural resource has so much upside potential because there's a lot of history, a lot of mo'olelo that goes back generations in terms of who lived there, what happened there, what was farmed there, um, how did they do it? And one of the programs that we're gonna be bringing to life in the next year or so is a um, cultural restoration project where we're, there's three large heiau complexes there, well, actually four, and part of the program that we're working on is to engage the community with restoring, you know, helping us restore and, and malama these sites. And that kind of ties into the greater KS mission, if you will, in terms of um, incorporating Hawaiian culture into the curriculum that the endowment is, the mission of the endowment is to educate Native Hawaiian people. So educating Hawaiian culture and values into the curriculum is one of the objectives. And doing aina-based teaching and opportunities on the land for people to engage in is one way of um, creating that synergy in Punalu. And I was saying before um, <clears throat> the show to you, I thought it was really interesting that you know, you're a guy coming from commercial uh, development before, you're with Bank of Hawaii mm -hmm. before, and then you transitioned over to Kamehameha Schools as a land asset manager. And you're really kind of the, the guy on the ground that's interfacing between the mission of Kamehameha Schools, the cultural traditions, the education, and then finding the right mix of farmers who mm -hmm. need to come on and actually make it a, a viable business. So really connecting all those pieces. And I think it's it's fantastic what, what you're doing and also tying in with Mahi Ai Matchup. So there's a lot of these pieces that make it, you know, more complex, but I think overall it's it's more what especially a community like Punalu is mm -hmm. looking for. Yeah, I think um the name of the place, I think, sums it up well. It's actually Punalu'u Ahapua'a Farms. Mm. So Punalu'u obviously is the place. Mm -hmm. Ahapua'a tells you that there's more going on here than just farming. Yeah. Now farms obviously is the ag component of it, but there's many different wonderful working pieces in the, in the Ahapua'a that have yet to be fully realized. And mm -hmm. so there's, again, I, I would really consider Punalu'u a diamond in the rough because there's so many things that can and will happen there, mm. it just takes time to get them going. Mm -hmm. You know, the land's always been there, so it's not like we have to be in a rush to do it. Mm. We just want to make sure we do it right. And connecting those three concepts, Punalu'u, Ahapua, and Farms, to the immediate community and the community at large really is one of the, the main objectives and one of the wonderful things that we hope to be able to do there. Mm -hmm. And so what you had mentioned some other uh, activities that you want to see happening in the Ahupua'a, connecting it to the farm. What were some of the other things that you want to see it happening? So should we talk about CSA? <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> Give Oahu Fresh a good plug. I mean, Always. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, 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 my personal real, my real immediate goal is to try and get a CSA started in, in Punalu'u because we have the farming going on there. We've got a very vibrant, active community there, so it just makes so much sense to connect people that live in the community with food grown in the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a CSA seems like a natural evolution of that idea. It's just a matter of getting it off the ground, mm -hmm. finding the right mix and the right chemistry, and, and hopefully, you know, if we talk a year from now, that might actually be happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another interesting thing, culturally-wise, um, I just firmed this up today, is that we're planning on doing a traditional board and stone class, mm. uh, I think in February. And this is where um, one of our cultural practitioners, Earl Kava'a, great guy, very, very knowledgeable, strong mana in this man. Um, he's gonna be, you know, he teaches these classes all over the island um, through Kikioka Aina. And we're just talking about doing one of those in Punalu'u where people from the community will be invited to sign up and you, 
I think it, it'll be like an 11 or 12 week commitment, but oh, wow. you get to learn how to make a traditional poi board, mm -hmm. uh, papakuyai, and a paku, the poi pounder. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing about it is all of these materials, you know, there's a koi that you make out of a hau branch to carve the board, mm. um, which traditionally is monkey pot or mango, mm. um, and a stone that you carve into the shape of the poi ponder. All these materials we plan on gathering from the apua. Mm. So it's a wonderful way to connect the community um, to the land mm. with the practice, the cultural practice. And um, it's intended to be a, a family-oriented activity. And so I think it's going to be, I haven't gone through the class, I can say it's just really a wonderful way of connecting the culture to people with the land and ultimately food because mm -hmm. you use it to um, pound taro and deploy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, workshops like that have already happened in other spaces, and this is just a new venue for it? Yes. That, okay. That's a well-established program that when I went through the class, I just thought, you know, we need to be doing this kind of thing in Punalu'u. And so hopefully, two months from now, we will be. That's great. Um, one thing I want to make sure we talk about, too, it, it's a little, um, I guess, on the side, but we've been involved with the upcoming Hawaii Ag Conference. You want to talk a little bit about that and some of the uh, plans around that? Yeah, so you and I are both on the planning committee, mm -hmm. and um, we haven't nailed the date down. We're thinking August of 2017 is probably when it's going to happen, but um, the Hawaii, Ag Hawaii Agricultural Leadership Foundation of Hawaii is the sponsor and presenter of this um, statewide ag conference that the hope is to get anybody interested in ag, yes farmers, yes producers, yes distributors, but even the, the general population who just has an interest in locally grown food, um, get them engaged in this conference and um, start active dialogue about how we can make Hawaii more food self-sustainable. I mean, we're still working out the theme, but I believe we're gravitating in that direction in terms of just trying to um, get a more active uh, interest in local ag. Because, you know, with HCNS closing down, sugar is basically, it's extinct. Yeah. Come now. Yeah. And so getting all of that land back into production, not just HCNS's land, but KS's lands, um, you know, other Lee trusts who have ag lands. I mean, there's a lot of ag land in Hawaii that I don't think it's a matter of lack of the resource. I just mm -hmm. think it's, it's really more lack of farmers mm. and a lack of market, mm -hmm. you know, demand that's going to inspire a farmer to, inspire somebody to choose farming as a career as opposed to something else because they know that they can make a living wage doing it. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, as you guys are planning this conference, are you thinking of or, or looking to the, the new policy that Ige proposed of doubling or whatever the percentage is now, it, or now brought it down? <laughs> yeah, is that getting um, intertwined in this conference? Is this going to like propose some plans for that or is it secret? You're nodding, you're nodding your head, but not saying anything. Well, well I was going to let our guests answer, but we actually one of the things that was part of the conversation where we we look at that and we're saying, wow, we, you know, there's government officials saying these things, and I think anybody that is working in the ag industry, you know, here's a statement like that, and it's like, well, there's so many components to that. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. You know, increasing food production. You know, we're talking about just straight calories. Are we talking, you know, what kind of food are we talking about? And do we even have a, a firm idea of what the amount of production even is right now? So I, I, that's definitely part of the conversation and we're still trying to figure out the appropriate way to invite uh, those government officials to that venue as a way for them, not to put them on the spot, to like, hey, what, <laughs> what was this? How is this gonna happen? But. I think it's a good opportunity to have that conversation. And that's the challenge we're having as a planning committee is when you say local agriculture, I mean, everybody has kind of their own definition. You know, are we talking about food? If we're talking about food, what are we talking about? Uh, a lot of times, and I know with um, the Ag Leadership Foundation, which is hosting the event, 
they include horticulture as, as agriculture. So just kind of defining what that means, yeah. I think is gonna be part of our challenge, but also the challenge for everyone that's kind of coming, that's gonna be attending the conferences for them to figure that out as well and um, kind of go from there. Yeah, and I went to this um, presentation that Jeff, Jeff Melrose was the yeah, presenter. Yeah, the planner day. Did you go to that? Yeah. yeah, it was great. He did a great job. And one of the things that really stuck with me was he said a lot of times when people think agriculture, they think food. Yeah. And that's Hawaii I think agriculture it was when goes, people say food, they think they automatically think vegetables. Yeah, yeah. And so, but that could mean cattle, that could mean a number of things. It could mean chicken, it could mean pork, yeah. eggs. And I mean, there's so many other things that go beyond vegetables. And mm -hmm. so I think that was a really interesting point because as we plan this conference and try to drill down to what are we actually going to put as the content of this thing, answering those types of questions are really what we are trying to do right now so that come actual conference, yeah. there really is a clear objective, yeah. you know, of, of having it. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of work to do with that, but it's exciting. I mean, I think it's, I think it's an interesting time to be involved in ag. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could be scared by what's happening right now, or you can be energized by it in yeah. the sense of, you know, not knowing what's going to happen could be a lot Catalyst, of opportunity, but, you know, there's a lot of opportunity yeah. that could come out of um, this void that we seem to be kind of in right now. Yeah. yeah. And I think too, like, you know, anytime you do a conference, you don't want it to be like just where people come and you just dish out information and then people leave and say, wow, that was good information. Like, how do you make it more uh, participatory and more involved? Yeah. And, you know, that's definitely the challenge and something we're hoping to, to address with the conference. And that would be great for anybody watching this to really, um, if you have an interest in agriculture, you should be coming to this conference. And even better, help us plan it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, get on, you know, get us involved, get involved with us now because yeah. if there's a topic you think is, worth, is worthwhile for the state to be investigating, then you should be on this planning committee with us and, yeah. and just be a part of it. So we have to wrap it up right there. Uh, thanks to you so much for coming, and thank you thank for you. volunteering to host the show that <laughs> gives the update on the conference <laughs> and post-conference. Thank you so much. We're happy yeah. to have you as a co-host. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thank you. <laughs>